Daryush bites off the challenge and excels as usual, looking like eight in a row. I don't care if I have to win another 10 fights before I get this belt. I'll do it. Bundy! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's dangerous! <laughs> Listen to me, we're at it! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. I came in and Matt, you're touching your chest very gently. Um, Benil Dariush will be joining us. He was supposed to join us. Um, I, I, I'm not saying, I just see abs. I don't know whose they are, I, I just see. And it was weird, it was a weird angle. I was it was back. a weird angle. So if I was fat at all, I yeah. would look really fat. If I did that, I would look really bad. You would look like a little piggy, and then I wrapped you in a blanket, and you'll be my little piggy in the blanket. I'm Jimmy. I'm sorry. It's not comforting. That's not. That's not a compliment. You know. I know. I know. I didn't. I didn't mistake it as a compliment. I appreciate you clarifying, but I didn't actually think. Hey, hey good news. Jimmy. We got um, so many things to talk about. The fights. I can't wait to talk about the fights. And Benil is here. He's talking about his fight with Oliveira. And I want to hear what he thinks about the matchup of uh, Oliveira Makachev, too. Um, and, and, uh, and we'll talk about all these great fights that just happened. Justin Gaethje, the BMF champion. Dude, I've been saying, how long have I been asking for a Justin Connor fight? That's the fight I want. And Justin's saying he won't fight Connor because he's on steroids. Yes, he will. Uh, he would fight Connor. Um, he'd probably have to go up to 170. But don't be surprised. Let's bring in Benil, by the way, that, that if that's the next fight. That, I've been begging for that fight for six fucking years. It's yeah. the only fight I want to see. Connor against Gaethje. Um, and this is the only shot it's ever going to happen because Connor will probably never fight for the lightweight title again. Um, hey. This is a different uh, thing. I'm excited about it. Later on, or maybe during, whatever. Remind me to bring up the competition my kid did over the weekend. Oh, I was watching. Uh, I was watching some Instagram video. Yeah, they really did that nice. The, the uh, Jiu Jitsu World League. They have a nice promotion. Yes, and they did it really nice. There he is. Look at this. Hey, Benil, how are you, sir? What's going on, gentlemen? How are you? I'll tell you about that later. He uh, Benil's a fairly new parent, I believe. So he might want to hear about that. Also, how old is your child now? I got a two-year-old and a four-month-old. Oh, well, Four months. Go. Wow. I, was, I wasn't way off. You're well, two years old. You're in the game a little bit now. You got you're you get the hang of it. How do you like it? Don't worry. Um, I'm doing good. She she just arrived, as you said it. I was oh, that's so cute. Mm. Oh, that's so cute. Let me see. Oh, this hi. Is, hello. This is Alva. She's the tornado too. Hello. <laughs> hi. She probably thinks she's watching a horror movie. She's like, who are those two <laughs> ugly bald guys? <laughs> uh, she's. She's just like, who are you talking to, Dad? Yeah, who are these? Who are these oh, monsters? So cute. <laughs> oh, look at her. She, oh, look Hello. At her. These are uncles, Ala. Ala, get out of the screen. It's Daddy's church. That, is so, that is so no, cute. She's very cute. Now, do you, bring her, do you bring her to the, to, your, to the school at all? To over at, uh, what, what, wait, I'm sorry. I, I, I want to say legends, but I'm way off. Kings. Where am I? Where are you again training? Kings. Kings, I'm sorry. It was close. Legends, Kings. At Kings. Yeah. Yes. She Do you ever bring her around to watch the training and whatnot? Yeah. She watches my training. She watches my fights. Uh, my wife is very involved, so I don't really have a choice in it. It was funny when you sat her down, too. She has very good camera awareness because she really did just block you out. Like, she really understands she what the center of does. the shot is. I'm like, get out of the way. What was she like? No. My shirt. Look at that. So cute, you, Benil. How um, how your younger child, boy or girl? Girl as well. She's, Two girls. She's four months, and she is so. We thought Alva was an easy baby. Alva, get out of the way. Daddy's trying to talk. Okay, we thought Alva was an easy baby, but Emma, she just sleeps, smiles, and eats. Oh man, you know what? You'll you'll gonna listen. You'll appreciate this. I'm a father of three girls. My oldest. Did her second competition. She's been doing dance. She's 14. She's been doing dance since she's your, your daughter's age, around two or three. You know what I mean? She's walked away from dance. She's doing this full time now. She wants to go into the martial arts. She's enjoying it. So she had a, a match yesterday, her second competition. 14 years old, nobody in the division. 
she went up versus a blue belt girl, uh, a 16 year old, and she won two uh, wow. best two out of three. She won two matches, and it's just so it's so much it's just so much fun, Benil. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't I know because I actually want. Okay. I want the opposite. I want my daughter to do dancing. I don't. I don't want anything to do with fighting. Can I? Can I'm I terrified you, of it. Listen, I understand, and personally, I I want her to go this route. Of, you know, they can make they can make money and be famous and do everything else through jujitsu if they wanted. How yeah. uh, jujitsu is a beautiful art. If they want to make a living like that too, they don't. Nowadays, not, guys like us, we you know. We don't mind getting punched in the face. We'd rather do the punching in the face. But, yeah. you know, a bad day in the office for us, you don't want our child to have to go through that, even though the great days are great. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, for example, for me, if I have a bad day in the office, nothing really changes. I come pick them up. They're still young. You know, they don't really get it. I pick up my daughter. Like last time I, I lost against Charles. I just came, grabbed her. She didn't know any different. She thought it was like, you know, I went to take a shower. She's like, oh, I want to go take a shower, too. She just she's it's nothing special for her, you know. So the right now, it's not a big deal for me. But for her to fight and for her to get hit, that would that would break my heart. That would just crush me. Yeah. Don't you feel oh. safer, Matt, with your daughter training? Don't you feel safer, like, for when she gets a little bit older and boys are in the equation? You're like, all right, well, at least she knows how to defend herself a little bit. That's a great skill to have. Oh, I'm going to oh, listen. Whether you I'm have gonna them get her or not, <laughs> whether, you, whether you want them to compete, listen, they can't dance their way out of the situation. Unless it's a dance yeah. off like the end of Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Jimmy, I know you like that reference. But I listen, never saw it. Well, I don't want to talk about that. Did, did, you, did you ever see Guardians of the Galaxy? I've seen the the first two. I'm waiting for this. Bro, with kids, it's so hard to go to theater. It's supposed to come out in like two days. It's great when the kids are uh, – the, the, the third one is so good, man. I, I'm not going to say I cried during it, but it, it got a little – it got a little uh, – You cried. You know, you cried. Got a <laughs> everybody, right. everybody said it was the best one. I like – I still like the first one, but this – I go first, third, then second. But it is a great ending. It really is. Good. Good. That's Jimmy. what I want to hear. I don't want to hear either. about fighting. You don't want to hear about the Guardians. That's ah, okay. I don't yeah. mind hearing about both. About I'm a, fighting. Get out of here. Um, I'm a, I'm a varied person, Matt. I, I don't mind hearing about movies. I'm, I love movies. I just don't, I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I, I do it. What did you think of uh, like I, I your your fight with Oliveira? I know it didn't go the way you wanted it to, but you looked very good in that fight. I mean, you know, you you were having a, a great first round. It's just one of those things. Uh, you know, he seemed to do the same thing Gaethje did. He just kind of hid the kick behind the punch. Um, and, and when you when you have something like that happen, what do you just kind of dust yourself off and go? All right, I'll I'll get a shot at him again. Yeah, you know it's not my first time losing, and it's not like my first time build, uh, rebuilding back up, and I've done it before. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, um, I'm not sure why the fight went the way it did, but like I didn't feel I don't know something was missing that night, and and I'm gonna get that fixed. You know, I'm gonna get that fixed. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be. I'm going to show a better version for sure. I really believe we fight again. I, I do believe like if we fight again, I, I win that fight. So I have to, I got to work hard. I thought you were having a very good first round. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 you certainly didn't look outmatched at all. He looked like he was pretty strong. Was he, was he the, the strength that you anticipated or was he a little stronger than you thought he would be? Yeah, he was, a, he was about as strong as I thought he was going to be. Okay. Yeah. It's more of a I'm sorry, but now this is a per, the kind of it's kind of I guess it's, I don't mean it, I don't mean it as a personal question, but for instance, how much like we if the fight didn't go your way, how much of it do you look? How deep do you look into it? Does sometimes s just happens? I clean it up when the kids are in the room. Sure. Sometimes, sometimes stuff just happens, or is there always a deeper meaning? Whether it's your faith, your you know. Is there a reason why this happened to you? Is you look too deeper into it? Because I know you're, you know, I don't want to say a man of God. I don't know what to say. I don't want to offend you. I want to compliment you. But I know that yeah. you're a, a God. Yeah, I'm a man of faith for sure. You yes. know, um, okay. I, I definitely think there's more meaning to it. There's something to it, right? Something deeper to it. Um, and just, it, it doesn't hurt to look deeper. You can find right. things that, you know, you could find things that uh, maybe you didn't do right. And that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Trying to figure out what I did wrong. And it was going well. It was going yeah. the way I 
because you're one of the few guys that's not afraid to meet him down there. And you were taking away the onslaught. You were taking it away. And then, you know, it's just in this game, it's so amazing. Just one shot could make such a difference. It just really is. It's as simple as, yeah. I know it's just a simple thing to say, but, you know, and I mean, I mean, so I mean, I mean, I don't know. How much do you really chalk up as that game plan went, uh, you know, just went south? Or is it not so much what you did wrong, just that Charles did right? I don't know. You know, um, I can make up so many excuses, right? You can make so many excuses. But then I just I just take a moment back and I look at guys like Aljamain. With him and with like, uh, who was the guy he fought? Uh, Marlon Marais. Mar- Marlon Marais. Look what he did since then. You know, um, there's, I'm not like, I'm not, uh, I'm not too stressed out about it. I just know I can build back up and I can, I could, you know, show the world that I, I, I am the best. You're right. And it's funny you mentioned uh, um, Aljamain because also, uh, uh, oh my God, Marab uh, had a couple of tough losses and then he's been on fire. Like it is funny. You know, some guys just, there's something that happens and they just springboard off it and they, and they don't lose again for a long time. I think what you have to do, and this is for me personally, you know, I think I was on a pretty good roll. You don't change too much, but you see where you, you know, what were the small details that could have made a big difference? So you look at those big details, because if you go back to the drawing board and, and you redo everything from the beginning, it kind of, it, 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 it puts too many, too many variables. And now you don't know what's, what's working, what's not working. But if you start tweaking little things here, and there, and you'll see big, uh, you'll see changes, then you know what works and what doesn't. So right now I, I, that's the kind of phase I'm in. I'm, I'm just tweaking things here and there. Well, a loss, a loss like that, I, on some level, that's got to be easier to to bounce back from because you know what happened. It was one of those things where if anybody gets caught with that kick, it, it's just one of those things. And you didn't even go out from it. I mean, it, it finished uh, Poirier. Uh, it, you know, it, it won uh, Edwards the uh, welterweight championship. Just that thing happened. Everything else you were doing was working. So it wasn't like, again, you weren't outmatched. It didn't seem like, oh, man, he's having a really bad – you seemed like you were having a great round. Yeah, no, I didn't feel uh... – I didn't feel like I was, you know, too slow or, or he was too strong or technically behind. It just, you know, it just wasn't my day. Sure. Um, and what do you think now? Do you have your eyes on anybody else? I mean, it's going to be him against Makachev, uh, their second go around. Uh, I'd like to ask you what you think you might have coming up or who you have your eye on. And what do you think happens the second time they, uh, they match up? Do you see the same thing happening or has Charles changed anything he needed to change? I think it'll be a tougher fight for Makachev, but I'm I'm still leaning towards Makachev. Uh, just just from uh, stylistically and just kind of feeling uh, Charles, I I still think Makachev um, he, he's going to be more patient. He's going to do a good job. Uh, I still lean towards him. And then let's see, as far as for me goes, the 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 issue is, for example, like I don't call out a guy like Dustin Poirier anymore. Because he's he said he's not interested in fighting me, so I I, I just leave him alone. Um, the other guys currently available are Michael Chandler, Rafael Fiziev, and Armand Sarukian. You know, so if, if it was up to me, it would go basically in that list. I would if I had my cra- uh, shot a shot shot at these guys, I'd go with uh, Michael Chandler first, then Fiziev, then Armand. And the only reason I have it in that list is because of the rankings. And by the way, I think that, uh, yeah, f- exactly. Rafael, uh, uh, Faziv and uh, Gamrot uh, just announced for September 23rd. Um, uh, okay. And it looks well, like, I don't know what, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what Chandler's doing with Connor. I don't know what, that just doesn't seem to be any talk about that being finalized. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Connor fought Gaethje at 170, uh, because then there's a title on the line. Like, even though it's BMF, it's just something. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't see Gaethje fighting uh till the belt i think he'll wait because i think he'll wait till october and then uh makachev will make a quick turnaround because of uh what is it called ramadan yes ramadan so because of that he'll make a quick change cha- uh turnaround and so yeah that's why do you think though because you, you said he might not want to fight until the title fight because a lot of times you don't want to do something right before the title obviously and blow your shot 
But for most guys, isn't Connor kind of the exception only oh. because of the size of the fight and the amount of money and the pay per view? You know, I mean, like just the magnitude of it and the eyes that are on you. Is that kind of the fight that people would be willing to step to sidestep a, a championship fight for a few months for? You know, for Justin Gagey, because, you know, it does make a lot of sense financially. He can, and it's a fight he can very easily win in most people's opinions. I'm not yeah. saying it's going to be an easy fight, but in, uh, right now, if you look at it, uh, with the way Connor has fought in the past, it, it's it's definitely a fight you would have to lean towards Justin Gagey. Um, it's it's really up to Justin. Like, does he does he want to you know take on an extra task that's going to bring him a lot more wealth uh, before he gets to the title, or does he you know does he want to risk it? Basically, I don't know what he's going to do, but I know his initial reactions were no, he's going to wait for the title. So, but. Um, you know, the UFC will talk to him and, and you know, they could be very uh, convincing, especially – and it's not like they're they're convincing him to do something bad. It's like they're, hey, like you can make a buttload of money. So yeah. if, you, if you want, you can jump on it. He was saying he doesn't want to fight anybody on steroids. How? I guess you got to wait until he goes on to gets approved by USADA. Who knows how long that takes? Six what months. You know what I mean? Okay, six months exactly. He's, so he's, he's looking a little svelte. <laughs> <laughs> he looks, he looks, bro. He looks. Uh, With some push-ups like on that guy, right? Yeah, man. He, like he's got muscles in his neck. He looks, he looks huge, bro. He's got to be close to two hundred right now. He's got. I, I think he might be too over two hundred, and uh, he's gonna fight one seventy and then come down to fifty. I like. I just don't understand what he's trying to do, and I think. Uh, to be honest with you, I feel bad for the UFC because I, I bet you like trying to deal with Connor right now is such a pain in the ass. What did you think too? I want, I want to get both you guys because Matt and I texted. I thought Blahovich won. I didn't think it's not like it was a, a Jared Gordon, Patty Pimblet robbery. It was very close. So it's like one of those ones where you can live with it. And Blahovich is that thing where, I mean, he, he just he had him, but he didn't do enough in the later rounds. I don't know if it was the altitude, but Pajeda didn't seem like he was on fire either. Neither one of them seemed to be moving. Uh, as well as I would have thought. What was your opinion on that? You know, I fought in altitude twice, and it, it really is awful. It, it, is, it, yeah. it drains you. It, it it just makes you feel like you wouldn't believe. So I, I understand why they didn't look so good, but these two guys are still, I think, some of the best in the world. I personally also thought Jan won the fight because the way I looked at it was um, the first round was pretty clear he won. Sure. The second round... I thought Jan had a lot of control time. You know, he had a lot of control time, but that last minute that uh, Pereira got up, he did some damage. Yeah. So you give him the round, okay? That's uh, that's one apiece. And then the last round, the striking was actually really close. I know people were saying, oh, you know, Pereira's winning the striking in the third, but I thought the striking was pretty close. You could lean towards Pereira for sure, but then Jan gets the takedown. And I think that should, you know, that if the – if the striking's so close, then the takedown matters. But if the striking is not close and you get a takedown and you do nothing with it, then it shouldn't matter. I, I don't know. The way I look at judging, I thought I thought Jan won. But again, like you said, super close. If the other guy gets it, I'm not mad about it. Right. I remember, maybe because I was impressed that he came back. I thought it was a wrap when, 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 when Jan got him down. I thought it was over. Yeah. And the fact that he survived that first round, and uh, please refresh my memory. Did he escape at all in the first round and start firing off shots or no? I don't I think, think he, he got up in the up. first round. I thought in the second. Am I wrong about that? Did he get up in the first round? I thought he worked he, his way up. Yeah. All right. That then that way, if he did do that, then they, then you can't give a 10-8 round. But if he was on his back the whole time, there could be an argument for that. But no, I believe he got out. I do. But So I remember the first round was clearly on. Second round, I gave Pereira. The third round, I remember being okay with the decision because I remember feeling that he was doing better, and I remember he looked the fresher fighter, and that felt like it was, I don't know, maybe I was just impressed with the fact that he was so fresh and and survived that first round and came back that second. Maybe I was just rooting for him at that point. But when he got taken down, I remember he was doing better on the feet, thinking if it goes this way, he's winning. And then what the takedown – there wasn't much done with it at all besides just being on the floor. There's, if he would have landed some decent anything, I'd right. be like, all right, he, he kind of got the round. So I kind of was still okay with him getting that round. So I was fine with the decision, to be honest. So when Jimmy, you said he was robbed, 
I was like, well. I said, Rob, but I, I probably, I said, I said, I texted back, I said, Yang got fucked. But yeah. I, I, that was probably, and then when you said, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot. It wasn't exactly like Jared Gordon, Patty Pimblett. Like, you know, it wasn't one of those where you're like, this was egregious. I was just like, I like Jan. Um, I like both of those guys, but I felt bad for Jan just because he had the, uh, uh, the Ankalaev fight last time. You know what I mean? And it's like, ah, I want to see the guy get yeah. a break because I, I, I like him. But uh, did he get a, man, I guess you guys are remembering it correctly, but he, I don't remember him getting up in that first round. Maybe he did towards the very end. Was it like less than a minute left when he finally worked his way back up? I think he got up in the, in the first uh, at the end, and then in the second one he got up. He got cra- uh, he got uh, he put on he did work. That's what I remember. Yeah, the second I remember him doing doing more, but I, for some reason in the first I thought he finished on his back. But I guess I'm incorrect. If you could look that you up, Jake, right. how long how long until where where in the first did he get up? And it's only because of my memory. I'm just like I, I don't know if I'm right or not. Um, and by the way, how how good. Um, uh, Matt, do you want to talk more about that fight? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I want to know what fight you get to next. I'm excited. Go ahead. Uh, the one, I mean, a fucking, the, the Masvidal flying knee by a guy who's 263. Dude. Wow, was that great. Um, Derek yeah. Lewis looked, he was giant. He just you know made weight by like a couple of pounds. And he said he had abs. I mean, how good did Derek Lewis look at 263? His last fight on the contract, too, I believe. Yeah, yep. He and, looked uh, he was coming so fast. Up. Did he look great? He looked so fast. Honestly, that's the physically that's the best we've ever seen him. We didn't get to see a lot of technique from him, but he physically looked the best he's ever looked. And then technique wise, I mean, he came out with a flying knee. He, he threw some punches. He did some ground and pound and finished the fight. Like, what more can you ask for from a heavyweight? Like, because most of the time when you see a heavyweight fight, you're like, please don't be a decision. And then, you know, they just lean on each other. It's, this guy is, he's, he's great in the fight. He's exciting in the fight. And then when he gets on the mic, people love him. Like, he's, yeah. uh, man, I really hope the UFC signs him again and, uh, you know, works with him because he is awesome. I think they have to. I mean, you don't let, Derek Lewis is such a personality. Uh, I, I don't see how you let this guy walk away unless he wants a 10 fight contract. But if he's looking for a few more fights, how, do you know how old he is? I, I, is he 38? Maybe I want to say 38. Maybe he's yeah. older. He's I should. 38 years old. 38. And listen, yeah. he, lost, you don't let him walk. he won his last, this one he won in spectacular fashion. Yes. But before that, he lost three. Yep. And then he won the one versus um, uh, Chris Dukakis. And he lost to Cyril Gan. The one thing that all these things have in common is, you know, they're all stoppages. So, I mean, he's like, win or lose, win or lose you know you're having some form of That's right. and violence. And he's a crowd pleaser, with or without his shorts on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know it gets hot there. I'm not going to get graphic. But, you know, let the Black Beast do what he likes to do. But hey. I, I'm with you. I hope he sticks around. Me too. I'm not my last too- thing. Go ahead, go ahead, please. My last thing is, you know, for a heavyweight, 38 is not old. And for right. heavyweight, it's like, I don't know how to explain it, but heavyweights, they seem to just have a longer span when it comes to fighting. A, a heavyweight could fight till they're 45 and it doesn't even, they don't, you can't even tell. Because the power, I guess, right? They say the power is the last thing to go. So, I mean, that's kind of what most of those guys rely on. I guess most of them are not necessarily speed oriented unless you're Cyril gone or now Jones. So yeah, I think you're right. Um, how old's, how old's Arlovsky? Is he 45? I mean, he's gotta be, he's close to it. Yeah. 52. No, he's not, but he's, he's, not he's, 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 40. <laughs> he's 44. I'm sorry. Uh, listen, guys, I'm concerned for our guy, Tony Ferguson, because he's not, you know, he's not, he's not winning is one thing. No. And, you know, when you see the stoppages, like, you know, he got subbed in this one and he got knocked out bad with the last one. He hasn't been winning. And, it, it, you know, some guys, they don't see it. Like he's 39 years old. So you round that up to 40. Um, he had him. He always has little moments. Like yeah. he, will play, he landed a jab that put him down. So yeah, he's still going to be dangerous. But 
I believe Dana said he thinks it's time for him to retire. I didn't see it. I, I missed the post fight conference, post press conference. But uh, so, go ahead. This is, you know, I I fought this guy, and and I have to tell you guys one thing. I don't know if this is like a, a style thing or, or or it's just from years of uh, fighting, but like. You know, when he he would be standing, he would like almost like a flinch pause uh, thing he would do that that I just didn't understand what that was. I'm not like I don't know how to explain it, but I I think it's it's Tony's decision, right? Because he's still he's still competitive. It's not like he's getting killed out there. It's just I don't know what he has left to prove. Like, what is he trying to prove it at this point? He's done it all, and he, he's got a great career. Yeah, and, and and like Matt said, the losses are, I mean, uh, this is a tougher one just because he got choked out, but it was in the third, and he you know, he didn't tap. He, he went out. Uh, it, it's hard. It, he's lost a step. Like, I guess it happens when you're, you know, 40, and you, again, like you said, you're not a heavyweight, you're a lightweight. It just seems like a little, that little fraction of a second that is the difference between you guys winning and losing, which a guy like me would never notice, but if you're fighting a guy like Bobby Green, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, Bobby's got fast hands, and and uh, it showed in the fight. And I know, you know, Tony talks about the eye poke. He blames the eye poke on a lot of it. I don't know, man. Uh, Bobby looked fast, and and Tony was just this weird pause thing he does. I it, it's kind of hard to catch onto, but he definitely does it, and I I think it caused him a lot of problems. He um I and Bobby had a pretty good third round if I remember correctly. Obviously that's when he submitted him, but I mean he looked like he was getting better as the fight went on. You know, Bobby looked pretty strong uh in, in the third round. I mean, Bobby Green looked unbelievable. So uh yeah, maybe the eye poke fucked him up a, oh, excuse me, a screw, I messed him up a little bit, sorry. Um a, a little bit, but uh yeah, I, I think Bobby just looked a little faster. Bobby just looked a little faster. Now, Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland, first of all, looked on point. Yeah. Yes, uh, couldn't give him enough to, he wasn't threatening standing, he wasn't giving him anything to respect. And I get it. Uh, Kevin Holland, not only is he very accurate with his strikes, he's a great counter striker. And he had, he, and, and he, yes, looked pumped up. He's running across the cage before and he looked, he looked in shape, but he was afraid to pull the trigger because he was afraid what was going to come back at him. I mean, I don't know. And then, and so then it got you. Then what happens is you're shooting from too far, and it just it just was kind of an ugly fight for Kiesa. He never got going. What are your yeah. thoughts on it? Um, for me personally, when I was watching it, the one thing that I thought really messed Kiesa up was when Kiesa almost pulled guard, right? Kind of pulled guard, or he he shot almost, but it wasn't a great shot, so he ended up on his back. And um, uh, Kevin followed him. Uh, Kevin Holland followed him to the ground and started just trying to ground and pound. I think that kind of really messed with, uh, with Kiesa a bit. Like he just wasn't expecting that. He just thought he's going to have such an advantage on the ground that Kiesa, uh, um, that Holland would never do that. That, that really messed him up, I think. And, and, and I think that just played in his head. And then when they got back up again, again, he's not secure. So now he's not secure on the ground and he's not secure standing. He just, he never had a position of safety. He had a few instances where he was in deep in a single and a double locked underneath his butt. He goes for that signature Michael Chiesa lift. The problem is Kevin Holland's pretty tall. And he gets his gets his toes underneath him. So, dude, you go through all that. And it would have looked so beautiful just to get taken away. And now you and then and then Kevin, it's like it never happened. Because he's, you know, it's just rough. It was a rough one for, for Michael. And then how about this for ironic? I saw, I seen um, a clip of him predicting his own demise. It was him on the DC show, one of DC's talk shows. And uh, it was him predicting. Maybe you can find this, Jake. It's him predicting uh, getting caught in the uh, Doris joke. Because he's like, he because he's talking about the fight and he's like, you know, Kevin Holland, he has like my kryptonite. He's good with those Dars jokes. And then DC's like, man, you got caught in like five Dars. You know, he's breaking his chops. And then he ends yeah. up getting caught in it. That's kind of, that's, yeah. it's like me in the yeah. back of the day. <laughs> you know, I don't believe in that stuff, but like he definitely put it out there. I mean, 
I, I don't know if it's because Weird. he put it out there, but or, or it was in his head. It just, you know, to be honest, it just it was a desperation shot. So, and if Kevin Holland is good at those darces, then you kind of you you put yourself in that position, and yeah. It looks like uh, we, I got a text from Jake, which is a little confusing. Uh, he said in uh, Blahovich shot uh, a single leg at four fifty. And he had him up on the cage and then later the ground for the rest of the round. So I'm assuming he ended the first round on the ground. And he said round two, he was on the ground from 316 until 154. So not nearly as long in yeah. that uh, round. And then that back fist that caught uh, Matthew Semlesberger from Medich. Woo. Uh, I didn't realize how hard that hit until they showed the other angle. And then you realize the entire forearm. That was nasty. This is the fight I've been wanting to talk about this whole time. Because I... Wow. I, I, I <laughs> I train with Urush and, um, you know, he's been really struggling with the, uh, with trying to move up to 170. He's like, ah, I don't know. These guys are really big. I don't know if I could pull it off. So it's been a back and forth. And the issue has been, you know, staying at 55, he keeps getting injured like over and over and over again. And it's been really rough for him. So for him to move up and then to have such a great performance, I think this is going to be so, um, such a confidence builder for him. So I, I was really I was really happy with everything. And the thing is, uh, the guy he fought, uh, fought Schmelzberger, is that Matthew Semlesberger? Yeah. Yeah. He looked good. He looked great. He was, he looked good. You know, he, he was, uh, he was doing a good job. The only thing I noticed was, uh, Udush was starting to find the timing better. And he, he was, he was, he was better with the counters, but, uh, Matthew was definitely landing. Ma Matthew was finding his shots and, and he was doing a good job. And, uh, a lot of people had it one to one going into the third, and uh, I'm glad Udush just put a stamp on it. Did you oh. think, to speaking of like, uh, I, I don't know, you, you said that it makes made me think about Gaethje against Poirier. I was watching the way Gaethje was ducking, and I was thinking he's going to get caught with a head kick. I, I was actually thinking Poirier was going to catch him. Was it me? Does he always duck as far and down to the left as he did that fight? It seemed very extreme to me. That he just kept like almost putting his head down in, in a great place to be kicked. Okay. This is, it is so strange because I trained with Gagey. Uh, this was a while back. And uh, we were talking about like, get it. Like, if, if he kept saying, if you get me with a body shot, I'll, you know, give whoever gets me with a body shot, I'll give him $500. And I was like, I was telling my wife that day before we went into training us, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for this $500. And, uh, but he did that same thing. Like he would block in, in such a weird way for the left kick. I'm a southpaw, Poirier is a southpaw. And I was throwing the same exact kick and he would block the same exact thing. And I just, I didn't, I, I couldn't get it. I didn't understand like what the heck is this, you know? So, I, man, it's just the way he, he defends. I think more than the head kick, the danger is the knee. And Dustin Poirier was was trying to make that adjustment because his his camp was calling for it. Uh, the way he was dropping his head, they they said, "Hey, instead of the kick, throw a knee." And as he did that, you know, Justin made made the adjustment, which which is crazy because he made that adjustment on the fly. He pulled back. Oh, they did say something. I, I'm thinking in between the first and second, they did address that his head. He's pushing his head. He's ducking his head down. Right? Didn't Poirier's uh, guy say that to him? Yes, and then I heard them yelling for it in, in the first. That's what I'm saying. In the first, they were yelling for it. Oh, and, first, and he yeah. listened. He tried to throw the knee, and as he threw the knee, Justin just pulled back. And, and I was just like, how did Justin even – maybe he heard the corner. It's, it's so weird because if, if I'm not fighting, I can't listen to uh, – <laughs> I can't listen to my wife. I can't listen to my kids. I can't do all of that stuff and, and, and stay focused. You know, I, it's, it's so hard, but if, when I'm fighting, I can hear everybody and do everything. Oh, so you hear, cause I've always wondered when you guys fight, unless one guy is yelling in Chinese and one guy in Portuguese, but if you're both yelling in the same language, the other fighter hears what you're, so you do register what they're saying. Um, you, they just, I guess, hoping that you're focusing more on your own coaches. Yeah, I, I start to listen to the other corner, unless it's Portuguese. Sorry, my daughter's killing me. That, that's okay, man. D d does it ever annoy you? Like, they'll say things like, he's getting tired. And I'm like, that would annoy me so much if I was the other guy. Or is that, is, does that mean nothing? So the fight with Jakar, uh, they, they, I was backing up. And, you know, Jakar was landing some good leg kicks. And he was, he was doing some damage. And... Um, 
they started yelling, he's tired. His corner started yelling, he's tired. And of all the things that were happening, getting hit, getting leg kicked, none of it pissed me off. But when I started hearing them saying he's tired, he's tired, I started losing it. That's that's how the whole reaction came out of me. Because, and I started just swinging for the fences. And fortunately for me, I got the knockout. The, the whole reason that happened was because his corner kept yelling, oh, he's tired and he's tired. And my mind is like, I'm like, you know how many sprints I've done for this? You know what I've done to, to, to be here? I'm not tired. So... That's where the switch happened. I hope his corner hears that too, because that there's no way that wouldn't bug them. Like if you if you if if you were credited with yelling the thing that got your guy's opponent to finally just just to to to, to reach a little deeper and knock him out, there's no way that's not going to really upset them. So I I do hope they hear that. I, I've I've actually mentioned this quite a few times in interviews. So oh, I'm you have okay. Surprised if they've heard it before. Yeah, you probably dropped them all after that. No, uh, I'm only fucking around. Uh, hey, uh, another good fight, an, a great showing by Miranda Maverick. Oh she yeah, had, she looked. She uh, Priscilla, man, she was having a hard time. Is an understatement, man. She just she she. It was not a good a fight stylistically for her. I don't know who she was originally supposed to fight. I believe Miranda stepped up to take this fight, and Priscilla must have. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. Who knows how happy she was about that? I forgot who she was originally supposed to fight. But Miranda, she's had some tough luck, some maybe a decision that could have went either way. And but but she's a beast. She's a she's really a good fighter. But oh, I mean, specifically in the grappling realm, man, she's she's good. Yeah, she could she could definitely grapple. And, and you know, it takes time. The octagon is not something you just get used to overnight. You know, and I think uh, the fact that she took this fight quickly, she jumped back in uh, into the fight right away. I think that allows her to uh, that experience makes such a big difference, man, because to go into that octagon, uh, you know, one day it, like you haven't fought in like, let's say six months and you, you're so nervous. You go in there, you fight. And then next time you go in there, it's been a month. It's only been a month since you fought. You, it, you feel so much more comfortable in that cage when it's like that. I mean. Uh, Matt, you did the ultimate fighter, right? How much more yes. comfortable was it fighting every couple of weeks? Uh, I'll tell you in that, in you, that situation, it was like, I looked at it like a gladiator training. It was such a weird situation. And like, you don't even know who you, cause normally, you know, when you're going to fight, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and more importantly, who, you know? So by not knowing who and it's now, it was kind of a mental thing, but I looked at it like a training camp and. When you're called to fight, just answer the call. So, uh, it, you know, we were just living it. You just literally live it. Nothing else to do. No social media. So, I don't know. I did. I kind of, I enjoyed that whole thing. You know, I don't know how much I'd enjoy it now if I was in a situation where I had kids and I had family. Yeah. But being a young gun, you know, I just got engaged. I wasn't, you know, no kids. And that, that sole purpose just to concentrate on 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 your skill set and then getting ready to battle it was something else but it was pretty cool you know yeah i mean i think quick turnarounds help i think if you can physically uh you know get through it i think quick turnarounds help help you a lot in terms of uh just being comfortable and having that cage experience i think they make a big difference well, am I, what was the, there was, it seemed like a slight adjustment that Maverick made in the arm bar. What did she do that, that secured the tap? Wasn't there something she did and she just changed her grip? Matt, do you remember that? I don't know. I don't know why that registered, but I don't remember what it was. I just remember it taking the talk. What the key is, I, I'm not exactly sure, but if anything, if uh, Priscilla was trying to score him out, you know, when you get the thumb up, the elbows down. So I believe she was probably just getting her thumb to the seat. Oh, okay. Maybe that was it. Oh, I mean, I, but yeah. I'll look at it again, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And yeah, then you, you got to remember women in general are, are more flexible. Not always, but in general, they're more flexible. So the it just takes a little longer for women to tap. You, you are going to be able to crank on that a little bit longer before they tap, especially if they're tough. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, maybe that was it. Maybe it was the fact that she was flexible and then she – uh it might have just been a quick uh, adjustment. So, yeah, what do you think? Oh, sorry, guy, Matt. I was just going to say, only because I was really impressed with him. I really like him as a fighter. Uh, he, he's had some great showings uh, over the years. Jake Matthews. Yeah. Um, his fight with Darius Flowers. Darius was he, – he had an interesting style. 
almost 100% offense, just right in the face. And then just, just he had such an in-your-face smothering style. And it ended up costing him. I think, you know, he, sh- he shot when he shouldn't have, and he got caught in that Kiyu team. But uh, it was a fun fight. Did you guys watch the fight I'm talking about? Jake Matthews? Yeah, Darren- yeah, I saw every fight on the card. I thought, well, I thought uh, it was fun, man. I was impressed. I I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed Jake's, uh, you know, he had the, the weather a little bit. He had the weather a storm or two. And he did. And, he, and then he found Jake, that finish, you know. Is Jake 28, right? Is that, Am I getting that right? Or how old is he Jake? He is, man. And, he, and he's been around since he's like 20 or something in the UFC. That's, that's what I was going to say. He's been around for so long. And, and you know. He's kind of falling into the groove. I, I really think so. And, you know, moving up to 170 really helped because he used to fight at 55. And I, I used to, like, look at him and I was like, I know he's young, but, like, how does this kid make 55? He's big for 55. So I think moving up to 170 has been really good. And I think, uh, I to me personally, it just looks like he's enjoying the process a little bit more. You know, he, he goes in there. He's not a – he's not – he's just – not like before where he was just like so nervous when he would fight. I remember watching him uh, fight and uh, I don't know if we shared locker rooms, but I just remember seeing him one time and he just looked so stressed. Uh, this was before fighting and, and uh, he seems less stressed when he fights now. And I think we should definitely mention uh third first round sub in a row, uh, Gabriel Bonfim uh, against uh, Trevin Giles. Uh, that was an extremely impressive uh, fight. I'm sure you saw that fight as well. I missed it actually. I, oh, okay. <laughs> baby, baby duties. You guys, kind of give me the rundown of it. It was a first round uh, uh, guillotine submission, and uh, it was his third in a row in the first. He's fifteen and zero. He's undefeated. I think it's his second fight in the UFC. Do they, Matt, do they count a contender fight series? That's not counted in, in the UFC, I, or I is it? I don't believe they count those contender fights. No. Uh, but, but what the fuck do I know? We should. I don't know. Yeah. Excuse me. They go the, on your record. The, they right. go on your record, but not on your UFC record. Right, so not as a UFC. So he's technically two and zero in the UFC. But he looks really good. He's twenty five years old. Um, and Trevin Giles has been around for a while. And Trevin Giles has seen almost everything. So yeah, that was a very, very uh, dominating win. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what he does next. Let's see. What did Rogan say? He said uh, Bonfim's yeah. guillotine is just death after he tapped him out. Seventy three seconds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But uh, you're not going to be able to do that to every guy you fight. I mean, you know, eventually, like uh, what was his name? Uh, Rosas. Uh, uh, Ra- Raul Rosas. Uh, uh, yes, Raul Rosas Jr. Uh, you know, you, you fight these guys in the UFC, you, you can you, eventually you hit a, a level where you just can't do that anymore. You know, you have to go into the second or third round. Yeah, there used to be a guy on the Ultimate Fighter, uh, something was it McKenzie or something? He's a guillotine guy, too. Cody Remember, McKenzie. Uh, yeah, Cody he got, Corey. I think it's Cody. Cody, yeah, no, you're right. It's Cody McKenzie. He guillotined everybody before he got to the UFC. Yeah. And then once he got to the UFC, he pulled it off a couple of times, but. You know, he had to grow and, and add new things to his game. You know, you can't it's it, it just at this level, you can't be just good at one thing. No. And when you watch these really great young fighters, these guys who are 23, 25 years old to see how they do against a veteran. I mean, it's no shock that uh, all, all of I think I think all but one of uh, Michael Chandler's veterans won on the ultimate fighter against the new guys. The, the, the veterans just have seen so much more. And those things that sometimes a young guy is able to do to another young guy, it just doesn't work against a guy who knows how to weather a storm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. That's why, like, for example, I have amateur guys, I have pro guys, all of them, I try to get them as many fights as I can. You know, my amateur guys, I always tell them, I want minimum 10 fights before you go pro. And then once you're pro, you know, we're not just trying to jump right into the UFC. We, we got to build up. We got to, you know, build up our our uh our experience and and uh it just it makes such a big difference it, it, it just being comfortable in the cage which which allows you to use all your techniques properly knowing how the game game plans and game styles make difference all these things are huge and the problem is a young guy who who's in the gym and who just goes hard all the time just doesn't respect it and and so he falls victim to it all the time and, and i think that kind of what happened with uh uh, uh, what's his name? Raul, uh, Raul Rosa Rosa's Jr. Yeah. Rosa. Yeah. Doesn't it happen to like, and again, it's just a sign of maturity and, and, and fight IQ, 
But when you're so used to that one thing being so dominant, whatever it is, whether it's a, you know, a guillotine choke or you, 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 you punch like a Sherman tank, whatever it is, when it doesn't work, it, it's, you have to readjust and you have to, to realize, all right, there's something else I have to do because this thing that I've relied on is not working. And that seems to be where some of the veterans will beat younger fighters who don't adjust well enough to that thing not working. Yeah, I agree with that. That is, that is actually so precise uh, because – Everybody in this game ha- has a specialty. Very few people are just like all over the place. Everybody has a specialty. And when they can't make that work, you start to see a breakdown of, 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 uh, of their whole uh, uh, fighting character. And I think that's really what I mentioned earlier about Kiesa. When, you know, when he did go to the ground, but it was on his back. And the fact that he was on his back and uh, Kevin Holland was like, ah, oh, that's okay. I'm going to come over there and punch you in the face. And then when he got up and he got a body lock and couldn't finish the body lock, like Matt said, that just that that changed the whole game. So I think you're 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 hitting it on the head. If you can't make your specialty work and, and you're you know you're not a veteran, you struggle so much. Well, I mean, also it's to be pointed out the Tony Ferguson fight. Bobby Green wasn't afraid of that guard either. <laughs> he was yeah. taking him down yeah. and clubbing him. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's like, here's your rubber guard. It was like a whack-a-mole. It was rough. You know, yeah. Tony tried the Imanari role, failed, and, and you know, he just didn't care. Bobby stayed in there and kept going. And, and I think, yeah, I think, like you said, just breaking guys in their specialty really messes with them. Yeah, and it just seemed, it seemed like uh, Bobby was not as concerned about being down there as maybe he would have been four or five years ago uh i mean tony was staying active i mean he was trying throwing up stuff but it didn't seem like anything i think he was trying for a triangle at one point it it just didn't seem like anything was really close to being secured it seemed like bobby was very very aware of everything that he was trying or was there something that you saw that was close i actually didn't think his hips you know it looked like he was throwing stuff up but his hips weren't in the position that they needed to be for anything to be effective so i i I didn't really see much activity from bottom. Okay. I, I mean, I, I saw him moving and, and, and throwing strikes, but in terms of hips moving or he can get arm bars, triangles, I saw very little of it. There was no controlling of the upper body. I mean, you know, you got to make space. Well, if you're either too close or too far, you can't stay. You know, that whole distance management is a real thing. You know what I mean? You can't, yeah. you can't just stay with a guard locked, somewhat locked, and not control the other body because if they don't re still just beat the crap out of you. It is not like back in the day. And when I was fighting, especially early on, because I was known as a, you know, a, a jujitsu guy, I had some good showings and I, I brought this up before. Thank God. Eve Edwards, he, uh, he dropped me with an uppercut, which was deserving because he'd be switching from Southpaw to, to conventional. And when he switched to the Southpaw, I went to clinch him and he uppercutted me. I fell down. He jumped on me and he could have fired off a couple elbows and finished it. And I was like, really like out of it, but I grabbed him. He jumped away from me because he was afraid of my jujitsu. The the round ended, dude, I would have been done. That's why I, I, every time I see him, I thank him. I go, dude, (laughs) and he's just like, Oh, F you, Sarah. I go, Oh, thank goodness. I would have been out of the UFC. Mm. Anyway, my point is, they're not so afraid anymore. So you can't bank on them yeah. to be afraid of a leg lock. They might Thanks. just call it that bang. Look at hey, listen, not for anything. Hindsight's 2020. The big guy that fought, I'm such I don't who fought uh Derek Lewis. Uh yes, he was uh, trying for the leg lock. He was going for a leg lock. There's a and everything in hindsight's 2020. Who knows where his head was? I thought he was gonna go to X guard. There was a Benil. He was what is X guard. It's when you're going for an Ashigarami, which is like a leg lock, and they put the weight on it, where it is a point where he could have just brought, I felt could have just, only because it's something I do a lot. I felt if he would have known that or done that, everything is in hindsight's 2020, but I thought maybe he's a jiu-jitsu guy, maybe he'd do that. He didn't. I, and I, I was, so I thought he was going to go for the, for the leg lock or at least off balance him. Cause I know for heavyweights, X guard is really hard, you know, to, to get under a guy, to lift him up. It, they struggle with X guard, right? It's, it's difficult for heavyweights, but I really thought, okay, off balance him, maybe knock him on his butt just enough to get, get up 
or go for the leg lock because he went for the leg lock kind of. He Can't didn't bet. fully commit. I, I, and I get it. I, you got Derek Lewis on top of you throwing heavy bombs, but and he ate that, that knee also. He did eat the knee. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Who knows so, where he was? Wasn't you know? he just kind exactly. of surviving at that moment? It seemed like he was just trying to survive, as opposed to. Uh, I guess he was going for the leg, but it, it seemed like he was in big trouble. But he was in perfect position. That's what I'm saying. Like okay. in terms of leg locks or X guard, he was in perfect position. If you yes. look at the way. His body is, and he's in perfect position. So that's why we're, we're just saying hindsight 2020, but that's what we would have done in that position because he had all the necessary uh, things. He had the leg, uh, he had the other leg with his legs. And so all he had to do it was either kind of roll, pinch his knees together and roll over, or he could have hit the X guard. It's just, yeah. It is what would have happened if he had said, let's say he does hit that X guard? What, what position would he have been in after that? And what would he have been able to do to Lewis? three things can happen you can get a sweep out of it and now you're on top and you're now you're raining down punches another one is you can get the submission out of it you can get that heel hook and finish the heel hook or, or an ankle lock or the third one is you get up you use that to create a scramble and get up those are the three things that i can think of no precisely that's it and that's all you need and next thing you know you, you know you, you weathered it and derek yeah. loose's energy bar took a hit and you have a, a way better night than a 33 second beat down. But again, man, we don't know, even if he was in position and he had all the right positioning for what we're talking about, who knows if he had the wits at that point, if they're getting kneed by a flying 265 pound. <laughs> <laughs> he might the not have had the wits. Yeah. The fact that he even survived the knee is amazing. Hey, but yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a, enough of this MMA talk. When you on your, when you're looking to relax, what are right now? What are you and your wife watching or streaming on on this on the streaming services? Or what are you what are you guys listening? What are you listening? What book you're reading? Give me something. Uh, right now, I'm listening to the like I think the autobiography of like Fred Frederick Douglass. He's he's Ooh, pretty cool. Who's he? he? Who's he? All right, so he was a slave who ran away to end up becoming an uh, abolitionist and abolitionist. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, he he was uh, just a great guy, you know, and um, he's he's one of the, they, you know, they credit him for uh, being a big part of the abolitionist movement. And and uh, I'm just listening to that. My wife, though, she loves, um, you know, murder mysteries. Yes. Crap like that. She'll watch all of them. If you ask her right now what she's, I don't, I can't watch them because like they, they just, you know, they make me, they make me sad. And here's the other oh. problem, too. <laughs> Good. Here's, here's the, the worst part. My wife starts to get paranoid. She watches a ton of them, and she starts getting paranoid. And she's like, it's, she's, she thinks I'm going to, like, do something to her in her sleep. I'm like, woman, well, if anyone's going to kill anyone, it's you. You're going to kill me. We both know that. So that's the – those are <laughs> some things we watch. But, it, like, um, you know, it, it, if I could right now go to the movies, I would love to go to movies. I. I'd love to see the 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 what was it the, the it was Oppenheimer the or the Barbie the movie? I didn't get to see the Spider Man movie. I haven't seen anything because of, because of my kids. Well, in a few years when they're old enough, you'll be taking Next, yeah. and that'll be fun. That's a whole other thing. We do that. The Sarahs yeah. invade the movies all the time. Oh yeah, nice second row or third row because nowadays you go in the back, you see everybody's phone. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 yo, get me the hell out of here. I get, I, I, a good point. Yeah. I, get, well, I get up close now. I get up close. I can't deal with that. All the theaters in our area now are reclining chairs. So you, oh, you, you, yeah. they don't even uh, they don't have the old school t uh, theaters anymore. They just got rid of the last one in my neighborhood. So it's, That's uh, good. That's it's good. not people, bad. People, yeah, I'm not complaining. People, no more kicking your chairs anymore. Remember yeah. In the day, you got wow. you to date. Someone's kicking your chair. You're like, I got I to gotta do something here. You know who you can yeah, credit with that? The Alamo Draft House. Because once they started serving meals, everybody kind of caught on like, hey, there's a much better way to do this. Um, so, yeah, I think they're the ones that started all that comfort and meals being served and great stuff. Because these chairs go back and you can still walk in the aisle comfortably to get out of the row. You don't have to ask everybody to stand up. Yeah, Matt's just taking me through memory lane. He's like, oh, do you remember dates back then and getting in fights? I was like, oh, crap, I do. <laughs> I did all that. I <laughs> 
you know, you're with someone and he's kicking my chair. You got to say something. What are you not going to say anything? Uh, I, I, yeah. I think I got beat up one time at a movie theater. It did was, you? It was, yeah, it was the parking lot of a movie theater. I was young. I don't know why, but we got we ended up getting a fight and, and I ended up breaking my nose. And this was even before I started training. So, yeah, movie theaters, man. I yeah. need, to, need to hang out more there. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, go yes. work your jujitsu. Go to a movie theater. See I know. I, well, that's that's why I'm. I mean, I I I just started training, but I know very yes. little. But but uh, the gi is great if I go, you know, in, in December and somebody has a coat on. But I want to do some no gi too in case I'm starting to get my ass kicked in in August and the guy's wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to be able to grab onto something. Be prepared All right. in any season. This, let me tell you something. This is, uh, I can't give him, I can't give the name. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he, he prefers not to let anybody know about this, but he ended up getting a fight, choked the guy out with his shirt. So even a shirt is all you need. This is enough. If it's just a good enough cloth, it's not gonna, it's not gonna tear and it's enough to do a basic gi choke. He was able to take the guys back and just do a basic gi choke with it, with the shirt. And, and, uh, the guy had like a red line on it. Of course. He cut his neck a little bit and he, he, he made the guy pass out and, and just walked away with it. So, you know, don't, don't, um, uh, don't, uh, take this lightly. The shirt's enough. Let me ask you, you don't have to say his name, but what belt is your friend? He, at that time, it was only like a blue belt. Oh, there you go, Jimmy. You're a year away from really defending yourself, my little bird. All right. <laughs> hey, man. I will, say this. I will say this. He wasn't a younger guy either. He's an older guy, but he was very strong. He was just a, he's just a beast of a man. He used to beat me. This was a long time ago, but he used to beat me up like I was a kid. Really? Jimmy wants to know if you could do that with the shirt if you're very weak. Now, Jimmy, you're not weak, but well, if you're not strong. You know, my, my, I, I'm realistic about my abilities. Like I just, I figure, look, yeah. it'll take me a long time to be anything at it, but right now it'd be slightly harder to kick my ass than it would have been two months ago. Not much harder, but a little harder. I, I, I think you're hundred percent right. But here's the thing. This is my advice for everybody that trains jujitsu, but they want to, you, you want to use it in self-defense. You got to know some takedowns. You have to know takedowns. Yeah. If you don't know takedowns, you're not going to be pulling guard in the street. It's just not. It's just right. not a good idea. Yeah, they showed me. A, they showed me a good one. How to grab all. How to grab. I think they kind of showed me a single leg, but I need to work on it more. And I take two days of jujitsu and usually two days of muay thai, just again because to be able just to handle yourself if, if some guy's you know fucking spits on me in the mall or whatever people do. Yeah. I don't know. That's perfect. That's that's more than enough. I think you're gonna. You're, I would say you're easily in the 70% and you can take down 70% of the population if, you, if you're doing that much training. Yeah, I just have to look at the ears first. Like if a guy makes a comment to my fucking girl and he's got cauliflower ears, I'll tell her, shut up, don't bother that guy. Yeah, <laughs> let's, just, let's just keep walking. Leave that guy alone. Hey, anything you want to, uh, Jimmy, anything else? Or I'm going to let No, just uh, August 12th, I'm heading out to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, to do a gig. That's all I got. Um, and every Wednesday, you can see me at the Fat Black Pussycat here in New York. Uh, Benil, is there anything you want to promote? No, but I, I thought we were going to talk about GSP, uh, possibly grappling. Oh, yes, there is that. Talk uh, about that. Yes, he's there is that. Be, I, I believe he's going to be going versus uh, Damian Maya. That's yeah. what I heard. Is that? Oh, man. So oh, here, let me you. tell you. Just wait a second. You're trying to put your, 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 your something in the hat. <laughs> what is it? Listen. G GSP, this is why I remember this. GSP for me was the reason why I started MMA. And uh, like he was, I was such a big fan of him. Uh, I, and so I ended up doing jujitsu because of him. And then it just snowballed to, into MMA, right? And this last fight, even though I lost it, but he was there. So for me, I was, I remember like, uh, you know, walking out, music playing and everything. And then I, I looked to my right and I saw GSP and I looked back, I was like, Oh crap. I got like, you know, <laughs> I've never been starstruck, but I got starstruck and I'm about to fight. Imagine that. So it was a, it was a really cool experience. So to see him grapple, that would be sweet. Now the fight that really moved you with him that got you into this, it wasn't UFC 83, was it? Cause I'll, I'll <laughs> no, I, I, I saw him on UFC unleashed. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, that was only a, um, I didn't no, know. What no, no, no. I will, I will say this: when when 
I was uh, working at Baskin Robbins. So I, I was working that night when he lost to you. And I remember people, people texting me saying, GSP lost, GSP lost. And I was shocked. Yeah, I was too. just completely shocked. And I, I know you weren't, and, but you know, it, I could, I couldn't believe it. So Matt, you're, you're, you're a legend just for that. That that's something that's, that's crazy. You know, I, I, I really, at that time, like idolized the guy. So to, to, to hear him lose and then to, for him to just go through that, it was, it was a, it was a really interesting thing, but I would really look forward to seeing him against Damian Maya. Cause I've, I've seen Damian train and he's terrifying. That's a great, that's interesting. Yeah. I think, yeah. uh, I believe uh, George is going to probably going to be working with John Danner here again, John Danner. And uh, it, I want to be, I want to know this. I want to know the, um, the rule set. I want to know, is it like, it's just a flat mm -hmm. out 10 minutes. Is it submission only? Is there points? Is there that EBI overtime? Are you starting in weird positions? What's going on? Do we know I'm, this? As if I'm a competitor, I hate the the overtime thing where you go for submissions. You're in bad position. You go for submissions. But Tell me if, why, buddy. Tell me why. I want to. I have my reasoning why. Tell me why. If I'm a competitor, I like if I get stuck in those positions is because I made a mistake and I ended up there. Right. I I didn't do my part. But like, if we're just gonna start there, and this guy has, you know, this whole this guy's whole career, like uh, training camp has been avoid, 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 and wait for this position. And then go go you know go all out. That's just not doesn't make sense to me. My my thing is as a competitor, I want to make sure I'm the best. So from zero to to you know to hundred, from the beginning to the end, I'm I'm doing I'm the best that I can. The EBI thing at the end, I I, I think it just throws a wrench in that. But if I'm if I'm if I'm a spectator at at the end, I will say it does make it really exciting, especially if you want to do highlights. If you want to do highlights, it's the best. You hit the nail on the head. When Hicks and Gracie was on the Joe Rogan experience, the master Hicks and Gracie, Eddie Bravo was on there too. And Eddie Bravo, who we're friendly with, I'm friendly with Eddie. It's his rule set, his, you know, conception of this thing. You know, Hickson said one thing, one line, and it's basically what you just said. It summed it up with one line. He Eddie told him about the overtime starting in either an if so Jimmy, so you know, if yes. the two minutes of grappling, there's no points, there's no points awarded. So what happens is if there's no submission in that 10 minutes, you have to start in either a, a coin to us, you get to pick a position of either a back who escapes the back the quickest or gets submitted, or being wow. caught in an arm lock who escapes or finishes the arm lock. That's what we're talking about. So Hickson says. When he hears about the, the overtime, he goes, but you did not conquer that position. In other words, you don't deserve to have that arm or back. You did not yeah. earn it. You're getting started there. You did not earn that. So to me, it does not show who's the better grappler, really. So what happens is there was a match with Donald Cerrone versus Hafio uh, uh, RDA. Yes, I watched it. I'm I'm probably the Obviously, Hop was my boy. I remember hearing, who's your boy, Rafael? Yeah, Hoffa, yeah, we So you saw that match. So I remember hearing. Yeah. I remember hearing that Cowboy submitted him twice in an arm lock. And I go, wait a minute, really? Because I know Cowboy's not bad in jiu-jitsu. He's pretty good. But I'm like, but I remember being like, wait a minute. RDA's got really smooth. I, I want to see this. When I seen that thing, who looked more impressive to me? The whole 10 minutes was RDA. He looked, looked awesome. He was yeah. going all sorts of nice stuff. In, in my what I remember. In the overtime, he started from an arm lock. I believe one was a little premature, so they stopped it when he was escaping still. And then he started again, ended up getting him again. But it's like again, like we talked about. You don't earn the, if they had a fight, he's not getting the guy's not getting him in a fucking arm lock. Like, you know what I mean? So like yeah. you didn't deserve to get that. I don't know. It's like a free kick in soccer almost. like Or one of those, like if the overtime kicks in soccer, you just take 10 it's, shots it's, at the net. It's penalties. Exactly. Penalty you're, gifts, you're, playing, yeah. you're doing penalties. You're not having a full game. That's the difference. I, I totally agree with that. So you're doing penalties. So it goes, it gets down to who has the best defense and who has the best offense. That's really it. Like that, it, it's not a, um, it's not a whole set, a set of skills, but I will say, if you want to make highlights, if you want yeah. to, you know, 
promote it, that's that's an easy way to do it. And it's funny because when we and in fairness to Eddie, I asked him the same kind of thing. I asked him that exact question. I told him what Hickson said, and he goes, "No, no." He goes, "I get it." He goes, "But we have to. You got to conceive with something because when you do those, no time limit, no uh, points. All you do is get a bunch of fucking draws." He goes, "We have to get it through." So I I understand. Yeah. He's making it fun and a, but it, it's more of a game than it is to see who's the superior grappler, if you ask me. But it's you know it's all fun. You know, I just want to see what this what this um rules will be for this 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 meeting between George and uh and Damien. Damien, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I totally agree with Matt. Ed, you know, Eddie's just trying to find a way to create more action. It's kind of similar to the in, in the Olympics. If you watch Olympic wrestling, it's changed a lot. You know, if for example, if you have a front headlock and you you got it for like three seconds they'll make you stand back up back to wrestling. If, if you aren't going for takedown stalling, they, they start to call stalling and they give the other guy points. If you push somebody out right away, you get a point. Like they are trying to make it as action packed as possible. And, and they, they don't want guys who are defensively sound. They want just offense, offense, offense. And, and it seems to be the same thing. So and I think actually jujitsu and the gi is going in the same route too. Last last couple of tournaments I went to, they they call a lot more stalling points, and uh, it's just changing. You know, they're 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 it's more focused on the crowd, I guess. You know what it is? It's it's the sign of of uh, TikTok and all this stuff. And, and I'm not shitting on TikTok, but it's it's the the attention span of people is much less than it used to be. So anything that is seen as going on and on, they try to punch up and move. Like with baseball, the pitcher can only hold the ball for a certain amount of seconds. Uh, yeah, yeah, you just put it up, baseball pitch clock. There, there are so many things to try to make the game shorter because everyone's attention span is getting less and less and less. So they're trying to stay uh, where people at least stay tuned. You know what I mean? The, people can play that baseball's too long. So they try to shorten it by doing stuff like that. I, I totally agree. We're, I think we're in the TikTok generation right now, and and everything needs to be fast and you know quick. The I, I think the problem was the previous generation because I think we ha- we're in the TikTok uh, TikTok generation right now. The previous one was Nutella generation. They were soft but sweet at least, and then this generation is just they they can't even pay attention to you. So things things are changing pretty quickly. I don't blame them. Like, look, I'm 55, so I don't give a shit. But if I was 20. <laughs> And I'm watching a baseball game, and it's the seventh inning stretch. I'm like, come on, let's move it. This sucks. I can go on my phone and look at anything on earth. I'm going to watch these guys, True. you know, throw over True. to the first base guy. It's just too much. All right, listen, I have to go because I have a construction guy out here. But uh, anytime you want to come on, Benio, we love you. And uh, yeah. you're such a great hang. So anytime, you're always welcome on the show, okay? Thanks. I yeah. appreciate you boys so much. I had a great time. Sorry about my daughter, man. Oh, That's fine. She was awesome. Man. Yeah, so great. Nice, nice to meet her. Yes. Yeah. Tornado twos is what I call it. <laughs> That's great. All yeah. right, video. All our best, bro. When you got something on coming up, please come back on. Let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. I think they're talking about November, just between us. Take care, guys. All right, awesome. take care. And before Thank we go, Matt, we should say rest in peace, Pee Wee Herman. Uh, no! Oh, I thought you what? knew that. Yeah, Pee Wee Herman died. Uh, he had no. cancer. He didn't tell anyone. Seventy years old. Uh, uh, right before the show, I read it. So That's rest in peace. Seventy. I didn't know that. 70, either. I know. I, didn't I know. know that either. Wow. Well, rest in peace. He wrote some yeah. kind of note. Sorry. Wrote some kind of note. I know. He taught me how to enjoy a movie theater. Uh, he wrote some kind of a note where he uh, he said he apologized for not telling people. But and can, I, can I just apologize to Benil for you and your crude humor? What what did I say? I just say I like to enjoy a movie. Bye, Benil. Thanks for having me. Thanks All right, for see you, Benil. That was pretty funny. Take care, guys. Thanks, Bye. Bro. All right, Matt. See you Wednesday. We'll promote the fights Wednesday. Goodbye.